everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be filming this glowy full coverage foundation routine and I use a lot of the products that I did purchase in my haul in my previous video as well as some of my kit products for when I do makeup on clients. So I hope you enjoy and if you want to see this look please keep on watching. Okay, so as you can see, I've already got my eyes and my eyebrows on so we can just focus on the foundation application for today. So the foundation I am going to be using today is the Kryolan TV Paint Stick in the shade G01. Now this is my tan shade. It has a really golden undertone and in this range I would recommend the G for those who are um, avid fake tanners. So I've already applied all my skincare, so my SPF, my moisturizer, and then my serums. So I've got a really nice tacky finish on the skin now, ready for the foundation application. I am going to go in with my cream foundation. Now the cream foundation I like to use is the Cryolan TV Paint Stick. The reason I tend to lean towards this one when I do my glowy foundation routine is because it will stay tacky unless you set it. So it gives that really nice natural sheen to the skin skin unless you do go in with a powder and set it. So to start off with I'm just going to take my foundation just applying a little bit onto my stainless steel palette. You can use the back of your hand for cream foundations. I find it does warm up the product a little bit better so you are able to apply a little bit smoother. Now a little bit of this foundation does go a long way um, so what I like to do is just put on, put on about that much and then just drag it down and coat the brush. Absolutely, it all over there. You wanna focus most of your product onto the areas that can handle a little bit more product, which is your cheek area. The more cream foundation you put onto areas that tend to move is where it's gonna crease, and that's gonna give you that kind of cakey look. You also want to avoid loading up a whole heap of product under the eye area as you're already going to go in there with concealers, setting powders, all that kind of thing. So if you go in with a whole heap of foundation under there as well, and it's going to crease and cake. It's so just going on to the cheek and we're just buffing that in. I like to use just stippling motions because that's going to give you the most full coverage effect of your foundation. And mind my super pale face, when I fake tan, I don't tan my face just because I find it clogs, clogs my pores um, and everything like that. So I just keep my face, my natural color. When you get down to the neck area, I do just like to swirl instead of stipple. Obviously you don't want to load up a whole heap of uh, product onto the neck area. There's no reason for that. We're not looking to get any coverage on the neck. For the forehead area. And because I am such a fair blonde, I do like to take the product up a little bit and just really make sure you can't see too many white areas and it all looks seamless. A little bit on the ear as well, just to hide any redness that we naturally get on our ears. On my forehead area, I really don't want to take too much product into that area just because I have a lot of movement up there, which you can see. So lots of foundation, if I put lots of foundation up there, it will crease and cake and not look as flattering throughout the day. And again, just some more on my cheek. And I am having an eczema flare up at the moment. Um, I have pretty severe redness around my nose area, so there and there, as well as on my chin. Remembering not to put too much foundation under the under eye area itself, as that's where we're going to apply concealer for coverage, so we don't need to load up that area too much. Alrighty, so once we have all of that product, like a nice even layer on the skin, you can see that um, naturally the cream product without you setting it has a really lovely um, glow to it. So what I am going to do is I'm just going to go in with some concealer now. Now I like to mix my cream foundations with just um, your liquid concealers. I'm going to go in with the Tarte Shape Tape. What I'm going to go in with is my beauty sponge and um, I've already wet this one so it is damp and just in with a little bit of um, Max Fix Plus or any sort of glowy face mist. So like the Lila B, a glow face mist um, is really good as well as the Touch of Dewy Skin Mist. So I'm just going in with that one, just spraying that lightly, just bouncing that onto the skin. 
just to melt that product into the skin a little bit further. I find that going in with a sponge after your initial brush application of the foundation, it knocks back a little bit of that excess product and really just melts in that existing product to the skin, as well as just blends in any hair strokes that you may have from the foundation application. Now that the foundation is applied onto the skin, I like to go in with my concealer just to give a little bit of coverage onto the areas that you're finding are needing it. So I'm just going in with the shade Fair, Fair Light Neutral in the Tarte Shape Tape Foundation. Now for my concealers, I have just been going in just with the beauty sponge itself and then applying it that way, not really using a brush. I find that not using a brush for concealer, you can get away with it just because the product does have a lot more coverage. And just bringing that up onto the nose, up into the inner corner there, and just out. You want to bring into those highlight areas, which is just underneath that, underneath the eye there, and then just bringing down into a triangle shape. So just down and up. So as you can see, that's where I'm just applying that to the skin there. Also cleaning up the eyeshadow, just going on, making that a little bit sharper as well. So I'll just do one side concealer and the other side not, so you can see what I'm doing with the highlight. So I like to just apply it with the side that I'm picking up the product from. And I'm just going in with one of the other damp sides that I haven't used any product and just blending that out. Also some to the middle of the forehead. So as you can see the difference from this side to this side, my face looks a lot more lifted. And then just repeating those steps on the other side throughout the concealer application, just going in and re-damping that sponge. Then also just going on the jawline, I just like to lighten up that area. And then on the top of the forehead. So on Sheppy Concealer applied to those triangle areas. So it's kind of just the center of the face. So if you can imagine where the light would hit naturally, you've kind of got this circle area here. And that's where you want to apply majority of your concealer. From there, I go in with a pressed powder. And now I prefer to use like a pressed foundation powder. This one's just Australis Fresh and Flawless Pressed Powder. The reason why I like to go in with a pressed powder as opposed to a translucent powder, I find that I lose coverage when I do use the translucent translucent powder and I just want maximum coverage underneath my eyes. So I'm just taking my, it's just like a fluffy dome brush and just picking up on one side of the brush, tapping off the excess and then just going in on the inner corner and really just blending it outwards. When you are applying your powder, keeping in mind that the areas that you do apply the powder is where it's no longer going to have a glow to it naturally. Just side of the nose and then bringing the product down, edge of that eyeshadow and just buffing that a little bit. But I just like to, when I'm applying this powder, I really just like to stamp it into the skin. I like to apply the powder all over my nose. So my nose is something that needs setting and I'll go in and recreate that glow on my nose with highlight anyway. Just on the, the forehead, just where the areas tend to get oily. I also like to set my areas that crease and I just like to do that with a dust of powder. Keep in mind as well when you are applying your under eye powder, the more powder you load up underneath the eye, the more it's going to highlight your creases where the skin naturally creases. Just because the more product you put in those areas, the more product's going to move around, the more it's going to get into those creases. And then once I've applied powder to those areas, I do like to just go in with my sponge. Because we are working with powders, don't go in and spray it with any sort of moisture spray. Purely going in and just stamping all that powder in so it doesn't give any cakey residue. As you can see, I still have a glow on my cheek area. It is just those areas are set with that powder that no longer have that. Then what I've been trialing lately is the Laura Mercier Translu Translucent Powder in Glow, um, just for setting the rest of my face. And for setting the rest of my face, I do still like to use an angled brush just because I find it falls into the hollows of your cheeks and everything like that a little bit better. Picking up some product onto my brush, tapping off the excess, and then just going into the high points of my face. And then just setting in those areas that we haven't already put that pressed powder. The reason why I like to set all of the cream foundation, regardless 
of where it is um, is just because if we don't set it like throughout the day as soon as you touch it you're going to have um, makeup residue on your finger when using a cream foundation you do need to ensure you set absolutely everywhere if you are one of those people who is prone to touching your face and I do like to just take this absolutely everywhere because I do like to have a really glowy foundation then I do just like to go in with my sponge not damp or anything just a little bit dry from how it's been sitting there and do just like to pounce that all over the face really melt that into the skin then when my foundation has been set with both the Laura Mercier translucent powder as well as that um, pressed powder, I do like to hit just a mist of setting spray. What I find that does is lock down the base itself and then we can go in with contours and everything like that. This is just the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. And I just like to give that a second to dry as well. Because we are wanting that glowy finish on our foundation, I like to go in with a bronzer that has a little bit of a glow to it. So this is just the Mecca. It just has a light sheen to it. And then I like to just go in with that same brush that we applied the translucent powder because it does have a lovely hollow to get into those areas. Just dusting it on off and then just hitting the hollows of our cheeks. Now with bronzer, you really just want to use it purely to bronze up the face. You're not wanting to overly contour or anything like that. really focusing the majority of the product towards the outer of your face because we want to keep the highlight center as light as possible. I also like to take that just along my hairline because that's where the sun will hit at the highest point of the face as well as just taking some just all over the nose. I then like to go in with my contour. Now, if I've really used a lot of warm toned products, I don't want to go in and use a really cool toned contour. Um, so for my contour, again, I just use um, an angled brush and just a little bit smaller. It's actually quite a fair bit smaller. Um, so there was my face brush and then this was my angled contour brush. I'm just going in with my Kat Von D Shade and Light Palette. I love using this for contour. Um, as you can see, I've hit pan on a lot of shades and I'm just going in with that middle color really just tapping off the excess because this is quite pigmented and contouring is really dependent on your face shape what I like to do with this application though is I really just like to use this brush just to place the product and then I like to go in with my bronzer brush and really just blend that out So once you've got some warmth back to the face, I like to go into my eye area and then just touch up anything we've disturbed, so such as the tops of the eyebrows, just really clean those up, as well as just going in with some colour to the lower lash line to really tie everything in together. Now that I've cleaned up that eye area, I just want to apply some blush to the face. This is just the Tarte Amazonian Clay Blush Palette in Blush Bazaar. I'm just going in with another angled brush in the shade Angelic, which is just like a really warm blush. And I'm just applying that to the apples of my cheeks, as well as just blending that one back. Alrighty, so once we have all of that, the colour back onto the face, I am just going in with the Morphe Setting Mist again. And then whilst that setting spray is still wet, I'm just going in with a highlight. Again, I'm just going to use Whimsical out of that palette. And when I apply the highlight, all you want to do is just hitting that C area. So just imagine a C from the end of the brow to the tops of the cheek. And just going in with some on the nose, the tip of the nose, and the cupid's bow. Some on the forehead as well. Then to finish up, I'm just going in with a bit of skin on skin uh, Model Rock Cosmetics Liquid Last Matte Lip. And here is the finished look. So to finish this off, I am just going to go in with a bit of Max Fix Plus. And there you go. So this is 
my glowy full coverage foundation routine. I prefer a full coverage finish on me just because I like to hide all my freckles any, and my eczema when that does flare up. Thank you so much for watching today. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thumbs up if you do like this content. I was going to film a fitness video today. However, it was rainy this morning. Part of my routine is going outside. So I did want to just film that next week when the weather kind of allowed for it. Alrighty then, thank you so much for watching. Bye.